Hi, this is Damon Tennant with the Get Your GED Now test preparation series coming at you with another percent problem. And again, on the GED test, you're going to see some problems have multiple questions referring to the same picture. So we're going to, one more time, use the raven and pigeon population at Lake Tuonga. I want to show you a couple of things I didn't show you in the first video, but that are very important to consider as well. The first thing you want to do when you see one of these picture problems, you want to get yourself familiar with the graph. What are these values? What are they representing so this side is representing the months and so that's very clear but up here is the title raving and, and pigeon population in Lake Tuonga so that's kind of setting the stage then down here bird population in the hundreds now some problems you may need to know uh, the actual numbers and in those cases you're going to want to consider this as 2600 and that as 4800 but when we're looking for percents or fractions or things like that we can drop those hundreds and not worry about them um, because that uh, when we're looking for fractions and uh, percents we're looking for representations of the actual number not the actual number itself so we can leave the hundreds off in that case then the final thing we want to look at well purple represents pigeons and, and green represents ravens okay so let's go ahead and jump in so what was the percent increase in the bird population at Lake Tuonga between April and July so the first thing we want to do is we want to find out what was the per, what was the bird population in April and so there was 11 and 29 so that is 40 so we're just going to put 40 there and we're just going to put a for April and then the second thing we want to know is July. So July is 46 and 22, so that's 68. And I'm going to actually just spell out the word July in this case, just because we don't want to get that J confused with June. Okay, so that's the, the April and July. Now, if you don't know, uh, here is the formula uh, for finding the percent increase, or for that matter, the percent decrease. So the percent increase formula is the difference between the new number uh, and the original number divided by the original number. So I'm just going to type that out. It's going to be easier. The difference between the original no number and the new number okay uh, let me just get rid of these extra things here Okay. All right. So the difference between the original number and the new number, and then I'm going to just draw a line here, uh, and that's going to be divided by, and then we're going to put in here the original. number All right. I'm just going to move that up here so it's a little bit closer so if you want to find the percent increase or decrease of a number you're going to find the difference between the original number and the new number divided by the original number so in this case the difference between 68 and 40 the original and the new number is 28 and the original number that we started with because they asked between these dates or between these months April and July so the original number in this case is going to be April uh, and in April we know that it was 40 just using the number that we already had there and then 28 divided by 40 So 28 divided by 40 gives us 0.7. Uh, and then again, as I showed you in the last video, we just simply move that decimal point over two spaces to the right and add the percent sign. So getting our answer, uh, I'm going to write that up here, run out of space down there, 70%. Now, I do want to show you something. So then our answer is 70%. 
Now, what if <clears throat> we make a mistake in this formula? So it says here the difference between the original number 40 and the new number 68 and difference means subtraction divided by the original number is 40. What if we made a mistake? We were rushing, got a little bit under pressure, and we put uh, the, the new number 68 as the original number. Okay, so let me just show you that. So you would again, uh, you would have 68 minus 40 gives you 28. And then, but if we made a mistake, now this is just a mistake, but I'm just showing you to make a point here. If we were to accidentally put 68 under there, put 68 under there, and then your answer you would get in that case would be point four one now let's go back to the previous page because I want to illustrate a point so now on the previous page you see that one of the questions is a common error that can be made while you're doing this problem so you have 41 percent okay and if you have done the math and you separated out your your original and your new and you did all your addition and subtraction and your division correctly and you get 0 0.41 and then you remember oh yeah I gotta move the decimal point over two spaces to the right and then that will give me 41 percent but again you have done all the math correctly everything looks good ding 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 that appears correct going back over here you look at the, all this list of answers and you see that there it is easy to make that mistake so that is why it is so important to do this work here and to clearly delineate which piece is which piece and clearly delineate the usage and the uh, uh, of the formula and plugging in the numbers properly the formula because the test is written in this way that is actually set up that if you make one of the common errors one of the common errors is here posing as a correct answer again this is the difference in how I teach you to prepare for the GED test this is not just simply a GED video this is my experience of working with students over the past 13 years to pass this test and these are the things that I know trip people up and then when you miss that test by three or four problems it is often things just like this that are tripping you up Again, this is Damon Tennant with the Get Your GED Now Test Preparation Series. If you're interested in this type of teaching, visit me, www.mygedlive.com, and learn more.